Before you get started with the lesson, let me give you a quick overview of how to use this series of videos. This is a series that covers Microsoft Office 2013 using documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. I'm a teacher. I work in Tolleson, Arizona at a high school called Westview High School. These assignments are selected to be exactly like what you would do in the real world. So using Office is what you'll use in a real office or in a real business. There is an assignment book that accompanies every video. Each page in the assignment book has a checklist of the things that you should accomplish in each lesson. Watch the video lesson to see how things are done. After you create your own document using the video as a model, you may have some modifications such as your own business names or your own paragraphs or your own data, but it'll look very similar. Now you can either watch the whole video through at one time or pause it as you go through it. Finally, print the document and your classroom teacher will grade it. So now, let's move on to your next assignment. Welcome to assignment number four, a sales report for your business in looking at the data from Europe. The uh, picture that you have on the screen in front of you is the finished product of what we're going to make. You'll see that there's some graphs, some bar charts. Page two shows that there's some pie charts as well. And then there are some tables. And then at the very top of the page, you see there is some headers and a custom made logo. A couple more details include the symbol here for the uh, euro dollar sign and then some footnotes. So let's get started. I'll show you how to do this from scratch. Okay, let's start Microsoft Word and then we'll create a blank document. The first thing we want to do is create the first opening paragraphs and then we're going to make a table of data to go with those. So I'm going to create the first headline. We're going to call it European Sales Report. Okay, I've reached the end of my first paragraph. It describes a little bit about the data that we're going to see on this page. Uh, a, few, a few items that we need to add here that you normally don't use in Microsoft Word are our specialized symbols. Right here we have some figures about the number of euros that were sold or bought in our business in Germany. So where is the euro symbol? Let's go to the insert tab and over here where it says symbol we can find that there's some commonly used symbols. The first one here is called the euro sign and so we have 125 euros and then the next item we're going to change that to 225 euros. The next thing I would like to do is add some footnotes to explain some of the sentences in this first paragraph. So after the word lower I'm going to click my mouse and then we're going to insert what's called a footnote here. So I go to the references tab and the command for insert footnote. You notice that here is a small number one that's been printed and at the bottom of the page the footnote. So let's type an explanation about this footnote. So you can see at the bottom of the page that the footnote explains something about the text above. It says the three countries that showed an increase were Germany, UK, and France. Let's add another footnote. This time at the end of the paragraph I'm going to click after the last character and choose insert another footnote. This time the footnote explains what the exchange rate was for euros to dollars. Next I would like to put in a chart that shows some of the data of the sales that I did in the last three years for my business. This time in Europe of course. Let's go back to this line here where I've just completed typing. Click my mouse, press return a couple times to create some space. Now I'm going to go to the insert command and this time choose chart. The chart that I'm going to choose is a column chart. There are many kinds of charts to pick from, but we'll use column for now. If you want three-dimensional, you can create 3D charts or just the 2D. Let's stay with 2D for now. Now, when you create a chart, it creates a set of data, and then you're allowed to change those numbers, and the chart is automatically drawn for you. So let's invent some of these numbers that we're going to use. We're going to type in the names of the countries here that are in our data. Let's type UK and then we're going to type in Italy. Now you notice when we get to the end of our area that's shaded, we're going to have to increase our data area. I'm going to point to this corner, drag down a few squares, and you should see we have some more room to type. A few more countries and we're done. 
Up on the top of the chart, what the data is, we have these three items called Series 1, Series 2, Series 3. Those are going to turn out to be the years of our studies, so 2011, 2012, and 2013 will work there. And then let's invent sales data. Let's pick numbers for how many, perhaps, millions of euros that we sold in each country, and we'll type those in. And you notice that the graph behind us automatically updates as I type in the numbers. So I've typed in the numbers. These are completely fictional. I made them up. You can make your own data. You can decide which countries you want to sell things in. You can decide which years you want to use. But you need to create a chart that looks similar to this one. Now, there are lots of options that we can use with this chart. We can change the series titles. We can change the uh, series picture, the, the color format. Uh, you can change it to three-dimensional if you wish. Now, I'm going to close the data table and I'd like to add a few more element items here so for instance let's say I want to add the data table below and that shows the actual numbers that were in my chart and so we can see on the graph we can see on the chart as well okay the next part we're going to add some formatting so let's go to the European sales report line and make that into a headline and let's try the second item called sales growth and make that a headline as well